Chapter Fifteen of the Automobile Girls at Newport by Laura Crane. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Ruth in Danger. Hugh, looking much embarrassed, came up early next morning to see Ruth. I have an invitation to deliver to you, Ruth, but I am rather ashamed to do it, for I am afraid you will be angry. Mother told me to come over and ask Miss Stewart and yourself and the girls, except Barbara, to come out with us for the day on the yacht. Why, Hugh Post! cried Ruth. What do you mean? Well, it's like this, Hugh said desperately. Mother told me to explain to you exactly how things stand, so you will not think her rude. You see, Mother is visiting Mrs. Irwin, and of course Mrs. Irwin, Gladys, and her devoted Harry Townsend have to go along on the yacht with us. Well, Gladys told Mother that neither she nor Mr. Townsend could go if Barbara went. Gladys would not tell Mother why, and, as you told me, to keep that scene in the conservatory a secret, I didn't know what it was wisest for me to do. Thank you, Ruth answered, but tell your mother that none of us can accept. Oh, Ruth, exclaimed Hugh, I am fearfully disappointed, and mother I know will be angry. I'm afraid I don't care, Hugh, was Ruth's reply. I don't like your mother's inviting any of us, if she had to leave Bab out. As Hugh turned to leave the front porch, where he had found Ruth alone, she called after him, wait a minute please i don't know what to tell aunt sally your mother will be sure to speak to her of her invitation and auntie will think i should have let her refuse for herself oh i know ruth's face cleared i will go tell aunt sally that she and grace and molly are asked i'll stay with my dear bab she finished a little defiantly if i am also left out of the party no one will think anything of it oh i say ruth hugh urged please come sorry she said shaking her head decidedly i expect you're right hugh replied miss sally molly and grace accepted mrs post's invitation with pleasure as mrs post's yacht was small they did not think it strange that the other two girls were left out how angry molly would have been had she guessed the truth not a step would she have gone as it was she begged barbara to go in her place but bab was too clever she understood what had happened and was glad to be left out of the party she put her arm around Ruth's waist, whispering coaxingly, Do go along with the others, old storyteller. You know you were asked. Ruth shook her head decidedly. Not on your life, she slangily retorted. Fortunately, Miss Sally did not hear her. What shall we do this afternoon, Bab? inquired Ruth after luncheon. Suppose you and I go for a long walk. Don't think I am a lazy good-for-nothing, Ruth, Barbara begged. But I have a little headache, and I must write to Mother. Molly and I have been neglecting her shamefully of late. I haven't even written her about the wonderful ball. Are you going to tell her what happened, Bab? Ruth inquired. I suppose so, sighed Bab. She was half inclined to discuss the unfortunate affair with Ruth, but changed her mind. Well, Bab, Ruth declared, I shall go for the walk, all by my lonesomes. I'll be back in time for dinner. The others are to dine on the yacht, so we need not look for them until bedtime. I think I'll take the cliff walk for the sea is so splendid to-day. Left alone, Barbara got out her writing materials and sat down by the window, but she did not begin to write. I wonder, she asked herself, why we have been mixed up in burglaries ever since Ruth began talking about our trip to Newport. First our poor little twenty-dollar gold pieces disappear, then we have that dreadful robber at New Haven. Now Mrs. Post's emerald necklace is stolen. It could not all have been Mr. Townsend, Barbara sat with her hands clenched. If it is true, she went on, and I saw the necklace disappear with my own eyes, then we have another Raffles to deal with, Mr. Raffles the second. I believe I am the only person that suspects him. Well, Mr. Harry Townsend, Barbara's red lips tightened, you are successful now, but we shall see whose wits are better, yours or mine. Barbara's face turned a deep crimson. I understood. He wanted to suggest I was the thief, only he didn't dare to accuse me openly the other night. I won't tell mother. Barbara at last decided. I'll just watch and wait. Barbara wrote her mother a long, happy letter, without a hint of the trouble she began to feel closing in on her. She straightened her own and Molly's bureau drawers, and arranged their clothes in the two closets. Still, Ruth did not come. Twice Barbara went into her room. It was half-past six. Mrs. Ewing's early dinner was served at half-after six. Mrs. Ewing, Barbara said, knocking timidly at her door, have you seen Ruth? She has been gone such a long time that I'm worried about her but Mrs. Ewing knew nothing of her. I believe I'll go to meet her, said Barbara, and hurry her along. She must be on her way home. Ralph was on the yacht with Hugh, or Barbara would have asked him to accompany her. 
for the first half mile along the cliff walk barbara strolled slowly expecting every moment to see ruth hurrying along as the walk dipped down into the hollows and rose again in the high places it was difficult to see any distance ahead the walk was entirely deserted and bab's heart commenced to beat faster as the darkness began to gather i suppose thought barbara ruth has gone somewhere to make a visit and has stayed late without thinking she's probably at home now waiting for me so i'll get the scolding from mrs ewing for being late to dinner i believe i'll go on back home barbara actually turned and started in the opposite direction something within her seemed to call bab bab the voice was so urgent she was frightened ruth needs you it seemed to say bab began calling aloud ruth ruth her voice sounded high and shrill in her own ears but only the echo answered her and the noise of the waves pounded against the shore she could see the distant lights in the houses along the way but barbara dared not stop to ask for help while that inner voice urged her on barbara was running now along the narrow difficult path oh ruth dear ruth she cried why don't you answer me are you anywhere needing me she heard a low sound and stopped nothing but her own imagination there were always queer noises along the cliff shore where the water swirled into little eddies and gurgled out again barbara waited she heard nothing more so she plunged on suddenly she drew back with a gasp of horror part of the cliff walk had disappeared where a bridge of stone had spanned a narrow chasm there was a terrible yawning hole jutting out their vicious arms were rocks rocks forming a sheer drop of seventy feet to the beach below involuntarily barbara had flung herself down on her hands and knees to keep from falling over into the abyss ruth couldn't have she thought no no but hark was that again the low moaning sound of the waters barbara lay flat on the rocks stretching her head over the embankment there in a cleft between two great rocks fifteen feet below her a dark object hung ruth ruth bab called her voice coming from her throat in a hoarse cry again she heard the faint moan this time she knew the second it was ruth what could she do run for help any second bab realized ruth's strength might fail and she would let go her grasp barbara could not bear to think of the horrible end as far as she could see ruth's feet rested on a narrow ledge of rock while she clung with her hands to a cliff that jutted but overhead ruth ruth barbara called again but this time her voice was clear and strong it is bab do you understand hold on a little longer i am coming swiftly a prayer came into barbara's mind lord show me the way yet even while she prayed she acted help help bab called out she tore off the long woolen shawl which she had wrapped round her when she came out to seek ruth with hands that seemed to gain a superhuman strength bab tore it into three four strips she dared not make the strips narrower for fear they would not hold then she took off her skirt of light wool and wrenched it into broad bands how barbara never knew she felt that the power was given her growing out from a rock between bab and the moaning figure on the cliff below was a small tree its roots deeply embedded in the hard soil ruth had evidently reached out to grasp this tree as the cliff bridge gave way beneath her feet but missing it her feet had touched a ledge of rock and she had flung out her arms and clasped the stone above her how much longer would her failing strength serve her bab again lay down and measured the length of queer rope she found that by reaching the tree she could tie the rope to it and it would then be long enough to extend to ruth removing her shoes barbara slowly and with infinite caution crawled down the jagged rocks clinging with her hands and toes finally she arrived at the tree and fastened her rope securely round it only to find it dangled just above ruth's head yet what was the use if ruth for an instant let go of the rock to which she clung her feet would slip from the ledge and bab's poor woolen strings could never hold her but barbara understood this she was face to face with the great moment of her life and though she was only a simple country girl neither her brains nor her strength failed her did she stop at the tree after the rope was tied no still clinging sliding her hands bruised and bleeding barbara was making her way to where ruth hung bab had said truly that she could climb never had a girl a better opportunity to prove her boast there were moments when she believed she could not go on then the thought of ruth renewed her courage just above ruth's head on the left side of her was a great boulder with a curved smooth surface it was to this rock bab made her way she was so close to ruth now that she could lean over and touch her courage dear she whispered and she thought she saw ruth's pale lips smile she had not fainted for this barbara was grateful 
when barbara was a little girl her mother had been ashamed of her tomboy ways but she had given in with a gentle sigh when bab grew and flourished by playing boys games by learning various boyish arts among them was the knack of tying a sailor knot edging closer and closer to ruth she managed to reach out and catch hold of the rope she had fastened to the tree with one hand on her own rock with the other she drew the cord about ruth fastening it firmly under her arms the rope was not strong enough to draw ruth up to safety but it would steady her should her hands give way somehow in some way barbara must get further help now that her first duty was over she began to call loudly help help her shouts roused ruth who joined feebly in the cry no sound answered them only the seagull swept over them uttering their hoarse call barbara felt her own strength going she tried to crawl up the slippery rock again but her power was gone she too felt herself slipping slipping with one wild cry she caught at her rock and all was still end of chapter fifteen